Namaste. Good evening. The year 2020 has been an odd year for businesses. However, the COVID-19 pandemic, a nation lockdown, unlockdown, and social distancing measures did not diminish the confidence in entrepreneurs to think out of the box. To overcome the economic challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 itself, some Indian brands like Amol, Fevicol, a couple of other big brands, they pivoted their business models to survive and succeed during the unprecedented times. We will have an extensive discussion on the topic today, how to build a brand during COVID crisis with none other than Professor Dr. Mehul Brahma. Welcome to Turiya Talk, sir. Thank you, Sandhya. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be invited uh, at uh, Turiya Talks. So I look forward to a great interaction. Now, sir, wears a couple of hats. If you talk about his journey, I think it will itself take uh, five to ten minutes. But more than the personality himself, I think our audience would like to know how to manage this crisis in terms of branding. So my very first question to you, and sir, welcome once again to Turiya Talks. How is this crisis different from conventional crisis uh, that we know of, sir? So, uh, Sandhya, you know, you need to understand that conventionally, whenever an organization undergoes a crisis, organizational crisis, so that crisis, uh, you know, is, is primarily when the organization has a victim who is outside the organization, you know, and the organization is, is trying to either protect itself or trying to uh, manage uh, damage and, and minimize that damage. What happens is whenever there's a crisis and that crisis is from, from outside, you know, and, and, and the crisis is of the company, victim being on outside and the company is uh, in the responsibility of protecting its reputation, protecting its brand from degenerating or degrading uh, due to an uh, unavoidable event that has happened, which was not in control of the brand primarily. But there are cases where it is in control and could not be handled or, or was not uh, uh, addressed to at an earlier stage. Now, that is a crisis wherein the primary goal is to protect the brand. That I will minimize the damage. I will, I will try to uh, make sure that the, the victim in this case is, is uh, addressed. And at the same time, uh, you know, my brand's image, the tarnish of my brand image is, is minimized. There are very, very few instances wherein uh, a brand has been able to build itself during a, a crisis of this kind. And um, Air Asia is one such example. However, that's, that's very, very few. Now, how is this crisis different? And, and this crisis is different because here, the brand is the victim. The victim is not outside. What has happened? The economy is hit. The, the industry segment in which the brand operates or the organization operates is hit. And because the economy is hit, the, the, the industry is hit, the brand is now the victim. So the crisis is not from inside. The crisis is from outside. The crisis is of the ecosystem. So here, one, the brand needs to protect itself. Second, the brand has to find an opportunity because this is a crisis of a different kind. That is not conventional. That is not what we, uh, you know, as, as crisis communicators were taught to handle. Uh, during, co uh, you know, during COVID, it's, it's something completely different. So, so here, you know, I, I found that sliver of opportunity which the brands can use to, to not only protect themselves, but to build them. So, so that is how the crisis is different. So, so here the brand is the victim. In other cases, the brand, the victim is outside the brand and, and, and the brand tries to protect itself. So, so this is the difference in the, in the crisis uh, conventionally and the COVID crisis. So you are with the professor and dean of uh, School of Media and Communication at Adamus University, Dr. Mehul Brahma. Sir, since you have talked about uh, protecting a brand during COVID, can I ask you one next question? How can one build it, please? Right. So, uh, how do you build it? Now, 
please understand that uh, this is a time wherein uh, if you open a newspaper or if you open a television which is your primary source of information what will you hear you will hear company shut down you will hear pay cuts you will hear uh, downsizing uh, you will hear every bad news that is possible on earth and that's normal because these are very tough times now imagine in this scenario wherein the entire ecosystem is basically driven by negative news and and negative news has become the common news now you know whether it is television or or uh, or, or 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 print because all the organizations are suffering they're going through a very very tough time and and not not today you know for the past one year maybe over over one year so here suppose if an organization is able to protect itself by not uh, disrupting its business by not shutting down its shop by not uh, administering pay cut by not downsizing so if an organization is even able to maintain a business as usual or bau as we often call it in in corporate parlance so this business as usual thing if an organization is able to maintain that in these times it's a good story it's a prominent story and it will it will get a lot of uh, visibility in prominent media because this is the time where sunshine stories are are very very hard to find so if during this time a company is able to beat the trend and and uh, of the industry that is in and survive if the company is able to beat the trend and uh, you know pay its employees regular uh, you know salary if if the organization is able to not retrench its people and imagine on top of it if the organization is able to pay even a marginal increment you know 5% it makes a huge story now that is the story that builds your brand so yes of course you 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 have to do well you have to survive this this uh, onslaught of the ecosystem the onslaught of the economy but at the same time you can not only survive but also use the survival story as a brand building exercise so that that is uh, that is how you can build a brand since you're talking about brand building exercise and we all say that branding is an experience and somebody said that a brand is not just a logo or your website or business cards it's an experience so would you like to uh, share some insights uh, why do you think this ex experience is so important now uh, you know uh, there are stakeholders of the brand okay so there are internal stakeholders who are your uh, employees there are external stakeholders who are your clients potential clients shareholders promoters now for a brand to to make a mark you have to reach out to the different stakeholders separately and in each of this reach out as you rightly said it's not the business card or the website it is the experience now what is the experience the experience is something that we are in a crisis the entire economy is in a crisis and during this crisis this brand is still with the stakeholders it has still the voice of empathy it has still the voice of sensitivity so it may go through a tough time it may have to take some tough decisions however it will not lose the empathetic and sensitive voice when it is communicating to all the stakeholders so be it its employees be it its promoters be it its clients and that is where the leadership communication sets in right this is this is the time where you make leaders you know and this is the time where the leaders can make a mark by not only 
uh, running its business well, but also making sure that through the communications, you have an empathetic and sensitive tone to your communication. It should not come across that, you know, see, the industry is doing so badly. And look at my company. I've been able to, you know, uh, get a two, two digit, uh, double digit profit. It should not come across as a boast. It should not come across as, uh, you know, as a, as a favor to, to, to its employees that, you know, I am not uh, retrenching people. I'm, I'm keeping you. So, so that tenor of, of the language, that tenor of the communication, that is the experience. And that goes way beyond your website and, and your visiting card. It, it, it is the experience that the leadership basically cascades, translates to each and every shareholder. And that is the only thing that stays with them. That during this tough time, we will be with you. However, are you sensitive? Are you empathetic? If you're not, we will not want to be with you. Absolutely right. Uh, sir, you are a branding expert yourself. So how do you know when a branding strategy is not working? Will you give one or two instances? I think that would really help uh, the next generation to understand. Though you're not an old person at all, uh, what you have achieved at such a tender age, it's commendable. Right, sir. See, uh... So let me just just give a little brief on what uh, strategy is. Okay, so every organization, you know, it ha it has an overall strategy. So for example, my strategic objective is to grow my business five times. So for example, Turia, Turia, this is to, to 2021 has has a has a revenue of X. My objective of Turia is is to have a revenue of say five X in the next five years or ten X in the next five years. Okay. So that is your strategic objective. So I am I am taking your example because you know that that will help the audience also to understand. And and because you're a you know fast growing company, so you know, it, it, you'll find resonance in that. And plus there is agility because you know it's a young company. So Saturia, so it has uh, it has a it has a strategic objective of achieving say five x goal in year 2026, which is five years down the line. So we are in 2021. What happens is that to achieve that strategic objective, you have to lay down certain uh, roadmap. Okay, so every year there will be some milestone. So to reach that five x, every year your uh, turnover has to achieve a certain goal, right? So so uh, if it is hundred, it has to be you know two hundred next year, maybe three hundred next year, four hundred next year, then five hundred, something like that on these lines. So you have to have a milestone. Now, so every year you have an overall strategic objective. Once you achieve that, you achieve your overall strategic objective of five years. And that strategic objective has to be aligned with your branding strategy, with your communication strategy, with your finance, with everything. So there has to be an alignment of your communication, branding, marketing, sales, finance strategies. So that if all these strategies may meet their objective, you achieve your overall strategy of 5x. So that is the uh, strategy roadmap. Now, the 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 proof of the of the of the pudding is in eating it. So if your brand strategy is successful, so for example, you have a branding objective and, and you achieve that. And your overall strategy is not achieved or your overall strategy is not synergized or, or supported or pushed by this achievement, then whether you achieve your strategy of branding or not, it is a failure. So you, you have built your brand, but it has not helped business. So then it doesn't matter whether you've succeeded or failed in your branding strategy. And that is the primary failure of the branding strategy. So, so the crafting of the branding strategy is determining its success or failure. So even if a branding strategy fails to achieve its target, but whatever it achieves, it is able to give a push to the overall turnover 
or the overall business in some way wherein it is it is it has a delta high towards that 5x then it is even after uh, you know not being able to meet its target it's a success so so it is the perspective of the branding strategy it is the perspective of the marketing or communication strategy that it's not only about hitting that uh, its individual target but whether even if it is achieved 90% of the target or 80% of the target is it translating into giving a booster to the overall business so that the overall business is able to achieve its strategic objective so to me that more than that 100% i would prefer that 80% wherein in that 80% my uh, you know overall strategic objective has risen delta towards its target so so you cannot have a, a failure or success of a branding communications marketing strategy bereft of the overall strategy so whether that that uh, synergy is there that symbiotic relationship is there that yes my company is growing so it is giving a push to my branding uh, branding objective and therefore this branding objective when i am giving it a push it is giving back to to the overall uh, turnover so so you know i am a i am a business person so i <laughs> I, i i look at all these elements not independently but as a tool towards that overall objective of of 5x so so the success or the failure it all depends whether it is able to boost your journey towards that 5x yes or no and that is true for any brand no matter how big or how small it is and whichever industry it can be into yes yes from manufacturing to services like, uh, you know it's like the operation is successful and the patient is, patient is dead so so even if the operation is not 100% successful the patient needs right. to survive and the patient needs to you know recuperate it, 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 he needs to get better so so that is that is the objective right sir in fact you have presented this paper at iim in your uh, conference as well and you have written about it in your book how to communicate strategically in a corporate world i would like to congratulate once again for writing so many books uh, more to come uh, but this i would like to know book. yes yeah yeah so yeah, i would me, like to know more about it and uh, maybe a few response uh, from different stakeholders yeah 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 sure so i you know i always uh, i always thought it is it is uh, very important that uh, one needs to have an academic uh, bent of mind even if you are running business so so uh, and, and and no wonder i am in academics today but but even even in business i always thought that there are certain thought processes which which are perhaps generated you know especially this concept that i'm sharing with you here with the the paper presented by amindor uh, you know that is is generated from my experience my interactions with uh, the corporate communication heads of the biggest of the brands as well as the uh, you know the journalists the, the the editors of the biggest of the papers so so my uh, my inference by methodology was primarily based uh, on a corporate aspect however i i i thought that it is not only uh, so i wrote about it in the book Uh, how to communicate strategically in the corporate world, as well as uh, in the paper, because I I thought that let's let's understand academically where it stands, where my thought process stands, and uh, you know it was very well uh, accepted, and and there were you know amazing feedback that I've got from the academia, because it's a blind peer review uh, kind of a paper, and uh, and I'm I was very happy because this this see. it's a, it's a synergy it's just that we kind of silo things you know this is academia this is corporate this is business this is journalism and all that i wanted to you know make a synergy of my my learning understanding uh, of the corporate and academia into something that can be used universally so while the academia can use it the corporate can use it you know people who are reading my book can use it because you know uh, everything is is uh, you know it, it's not siloed it is it is it is one continuum and so therefore we have to uh, use every experience that we have from every quarter to to uh, 
get that knowledge pool so that we can uh, you know contribute towards um, you know with our knowledge with our experience with our expertise uh, towards um, towards finding new things and making uh, things better the objective is not to invent the wheel but you know to 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 have the best design of the wheel which will survive the time of today and for that any any uh, inputs from corporate or academia was completely welcome sir you have been a journalist then you were into corporate communications now into something very different so considering all the three roles uh, i think you are a good painter too i'm sure all these would really help to understand that how powerful a tool is media for uh, brand building so i would like you to answer this question from both the perspectives uh, traditional to uh, new age media please see um media has always played a very very strong part in brand building and uh, during the course of our discussion when i was talking about the sunshine story bit so for the uh, for the development of the paper that i had written or 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 the part that i had written in the book um as i told you that i had interacted i had interviewed actually you know uh, very senior media people and and from there i have understood that there are you know four five billion things that i have i have captured one is that there is a dearth of sunshine stories so while in a normal time a 10% increment or a 15% increment will not be able to make a, you know make a mark in in a newspaper like the economic times or business standard or at this point of time even a you know delta 5% increment will will get a very very prominent uh, visibility and therefore i am basically using the newspaper the media and and uh conventional and unconventional media so so you know maybe that you know the digital media the online um, you know online uh, portals uh, which are very very popular today and especially if you if you divide it by demography uh uh people under a certain demography of of say you know under 30 now you know earlier it was under 20 gen z uh you know they 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 do not Uh, read a physical newspaper they their the source of information is through their mobiles and mobiles and and uh, social media uh, through facebook through in short stories and and all that so there if you want to make a mark this is the time and even the simple things that you know simple things like say hr stories because uh, you know in today's world people because they are not able to go to their offices and all that and and you have to work from home there are very many uh, cases of uh, depression and other uh, mental illness so therefore organizations which are taking care of that aspect brands which are taking care of the aspect of their own employees you know that makes a good hr story that makes a good brand building exercise so you have to look at all these aspects but however media and and this i am i i i am telling as a former journalist um as as a corporate person and and now uh, you know as as somebody as a dean who is uh, preparing future journalists you know my students uh, who will be journalists in the future media is very powerful it it's the most powerful brand building tool that has ever existed in every form be it in print or digital or anything media still remains the most powerful and most potent tool for building brand and 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 that has not changed the format has changed you know there maybe there's a more uh, greater dependence on the digital version of the format but it's still media it's still news what you're disseminating is news and so therefore this becomes the most potent tool to build your brand and expand your business and and communicate in in a in a, in a fantastic way and again uh, the second point that i have got from the those interactions from those interviews of my um, colleagues in in in, uh, in media is that the the tenor as i had said a little earlier that the tenor of of the leadership communication that will help build your brand has to be uh empathetic and sensitive because see please understand the economy is in a in a bad state the industry is in a bad state people are dying 
people are, are are not well you know we are all suffering companies are hit so at this point of time how you present your success that makes a huge difference if you are presenting your su success arrogantly then you will be immediately uh, you know rejected by the people but if you are presenting your success in such a way that that it is inspiring for the industry or for other industries to to look at your model and to understand that uh, okay so so if if this organization has done this right and this is how it has uh, you know been successful we also can emulate that model and we also can think of you know looking at innovative ways to make our businesses better so whether you inspire or whether you you know uh, through your arrogance are able to uh, not make a mark depends on the tenor of your communication so the tenor of the communication um, you know and and the content of the communication sunshine stories all point out towards the fact that uh, media still remains the most potent tool for brand building and the most credible tool to understand it's not an advertisement it's not you talking about yourself it's a credible third party um, talking about you you know it's earned media in, in in digital marketing we call it earned media so it generates authority right uh, so you have not missed much uh, you are watching a show with uh, dr brahma and uh, professor dr brahma and sir uh, is looking at branding during covid times not talking about a guest uh, dr brahma is a delight in luxury and uh, communications and he also is a phd in economics he is a renowned author and a tedx speaker on the myth value of luxury he has held several uh, senior editorial positions in leading publications such as economic times cnbc tv 18 new york times cool insights and uh, steel insights and couple of other uh, publications as well now apart from this uh, towards the end of his uh, corporate career uh, before joining uh, the sadamus university he was uh, the communications leader he was uh, with uh, communications leader and heading csr corporate communications branding and publications for m junction a tata group company so my question to you sir sir you were with the tata company so will you talk more about your role as an academician please um uh, sure. so um see i have made a transition uh, you know from from corporate to academia very recently and i have taken over as a professor and a dean the school of media and communication at adamas university in calcutta and so i am i am now responsible for uh, shaping future journalists and uh, communicators and that's a very very responsible position so i i i feel privileged and thankful to uh, the chancellor and the vice chancellor for giving me this opportunity now uh uh as a corporate you know i i i have been taking sessions at at the iits and iims on 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 process communication on brand building and 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 uh, and and therefore you know i i basically developed a flair of of teaching uh you know during those sessions and, and i loved the interaction with students and i loved uh, the the ideas that that were exchanged and and uh, and uh, you know students on like our times you know uh, you know when we were students we were very scared of our professors you know very scared to speak even but students now they are buzzing with ideas and and they they are not afraid and that's a great thing and that way uh, you know i as a as a, as a as a professor i also learn my my faculties my faculty members they also learn and and media uh and journalism is, is a very dynamic subject and i i primarily used to um, you know uh, interact with the business students and and uh, now with the journalism and media students so it's it's a fantastic learning experience and uh, i i look forward to a wonderful journey you know it's it's just the beginning of a journey and i i i hope it's the beginning of a rather long journey um so so let's see where it takes me thank you thank you for asking that so, yeah. right uh, just two last questions uh, your views on kuria communications llp and finally duria talks please yeah uh, so uh, 
I I I know Sandhya for a very long time. She's uh, she's like a younger sister, and uh, I am very proud of the way uh, she has been able to build Surya Communications. And and uh, you know Surya Communications, the good part is that it's it's very agile, very dynamic, and and uh, has a knack of understanding the need of the market as well as its clients. So, so it is able to, you know, make that make that synergy, make that marriage between what is required by the client and what they provide. So, uh, so I, you know, I, I have a, I, I have a very, very ambitious uh, hope uh, that that uh, Sandhya will will uh, take Korea Communications to a great height, and then she's she's uh, going at a very good speed there. And um, about Korea Talks. Um, uh, you know, I, I have I have been uh, listening to it, and uh, she has been able to get uh, you know very uh, very many corporate and uh, you know uh, leaders on on her chat show, and and it has been a very uh, uh, very very uh, good platform in terms of uh, you know exchange of ideas from 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 different uh, fields of work, and and uh, you know I'm sure the audience uh, loves it. And they would love uh, this chat as well. So I, I wish all the best to Sandhya. And uh, you know, uh, I, uh, one thing I, I uh, had uh, forgotten to tell her that I, I love the name Turiya, you know, and uh, and the fact that uh, you know I am uh, I am a believer in Advaita Vedanta and and uh, uh, and and Turiya is a very very uh, uh, you know a term which is very close to my heart. You know, which is pure consciousness, and uh, which is your existence, and so I'm I'm so glad that she has named her uh, uh, company as Turiya Communication. So, um, so that that's that's something that I really appreciate, and uh, thank you, thank you for uh, for for this chat, for this uh, opportunity to be a part of the show. Right. Uh, so, with your permission, I think uh, we can wrap up the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandhya. Yeah. So thank you for taking your time out and being with us. I'm sure my viewers would have got, gathered a lot of knowledge from you because this is not only wholesome, but it is uh, quite inspiring. And trust me, I never knew that uh, branding is that tough. When I floated my company, I had to cry for months and months to think about the name, the logo, the website. And ultimately, you're true that uh, we just didn't sell all these. Rather, we sell experience to our uh, customers. This is the reason our clients do not just approach us once, but we make sure they approach us uh, 10 to 12 times uh, for assignments. Uh, that is it. And I wanted to say all that uh, we will get your favorite guest in the next uh, show. Till then, be safe and happy. But please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share your own Turiya Talks. And uh, keep... Uh, your pen and paper while watching this show how to build a brand during covid crisis because i'm very sure people those who are branding will learn and take something as a cue from this session and namaste